Now, as many of you who follow the channel will know, I do a mix of content. Sometimes it's topical stuff that's quite short commentary on the issues of the day, and sometimes the much deeper insights into the key issues of our age. Now, I've been buoyed to see that despite the shorter videos getting more clicks and follows and so forth, the longer videos do have a loyal, if smaller, audience who really do watch and imbibe the content, so I thank you for that. Now, as the channel progresses, I'd like to make more of that sort of content, and in that vein, I'm going to take on quite a big topic today. How did we get to this crisis of meaning we have in the modern Western world? How did we get into the mess we're in, and what do we do about it? Now, as I stated in a recent video, the goal of liberalism in the 20th century was that we'd all end up being these rational, enlightened, scientifically-minded human beings. The idea was that we'd all let go of our identities rooted in nation and peoples and history and culture and all become some variant of Louis Theroux in our upper-middle-class society. Now, despite that worldview working out for the elite few, specifically the liberal elite, it hasn't really worked out en masse. We've all noticed our society has almost degenerated into a materialistic and nihilistic place where you're supposed to devise your own meaning and just imbibe as much pleasure as you can. While we can try and cover up the reality via utopian leftist ideologies and boomers listening to Bob Dylan and pretending it's 1964 instead of 2024, many of us sense that bad things are on the horizon. We've lost a sense of meaning in the world. World. Now, many people offer opinions as to why that may well be. Some say it's Tony Blair and his enforced mass immigration and multiculturalist ideology, a sort of proto-wokeism. Others may argue it might be Margaret Thatcher and the destruction of a manufacturing base and a turn towards materialism. Some believe it may have been in the 1960s when we had the liberal turn away from family, duty and God towards pleasure, hedonism and quote-unquote free love. Others still argue it was the two world wars that were so brutal that many men lost faith in themselves, their countries and God and sat the rest of their lives by the window smoking a pipe in quite a strong sadness. Now, I think each of these are a valid dimension of what's happened to the Western world, but it goes much deeper than that in that we've lost our tradition. And by tradition, I don't just mean traditional values. What I really mean is the heart of Western culture that orients us as human beings in a shared society. However, personally, I think you can chart the crisis of meaning right back to the European Enlightenment in the 17th, but especially 18th centuries. But credit where it's due, the Enlightenment did create a lot of amazing things, obviously scientific and technological achievements, the Industrial Revolution. However, there were many flaws to this as well. In essence, while we gained a lot of material wealth via the Enlightenment, we also lost a part of our soul. Now, a good way to understand this is by looking into what's known as the perennial philosophy. Now, for the eagle-eyed among you, you may have noticed that King Charles is an adherent to the perennial philosophy, however, not quite in the way that I would be. King Charles is essentially using the perennial philosophy to justify a multicultural worldview where there's a mystical heart, a mystical truth, and all of the great traditions, and he can unite them all by being the so-called defender of the faiths, not faith, as head regent of the United Kingdom. Now, without me going into too much detail here, that for me is something of a betrayal of how the perennial philosophy truly works, because ultimately, you're supposed to dive into the heart of one tradition and let that branch out and flower into a broader society as well as the personal growth it offers. Now, how the perennial philosophy works is there's a mystical truth to the heart of life that only a certain amount of people see, someone like the Buddha or Jesus Christ, for example. And via revelation, they pass that down to the rest of society and inform the moral values of a certain civilization. Now, over time, that revelation is passed on into the culture. You could think in the UK of people like William Blake or John Milton. They have deep insights into the spiritual life, which they bring back into the practical life of the human being. These revelations and insights are then synthesized into the unique culture they are part of. For instance, in the West, that would be Christian culture, specifically in the UK, at least historically, Anglican Christian culture. This is essentially what holds a society together, gives us a shared value system, allows us to speak to the shared nodes of meaning. It's why Nietzsche, a great anti-Christian and atheist, said that Christianity was cutting itself down with its own sword of reason. What Nietzsche meant was that Christian European culture had provided the foundation to find objective truth in the world, i.e. it created the basis for science. However, that very sword of science it created was now hacking at the roots of the West which was going to create a sort of chaos. That's what he meant by the phrase, God is dead. 
Now, if we understand the transcendent properly, we know that God simply isn't a man with a beard on a cloud. He's transcendent being, life itself, if you like. However, the Western world acts as if God really is dead with its scientific rationalist humanism. In simple terms, what this means is we've not just turned away from religion and our tradition, we've turned away from what's known as the Logos. The word logos is Greek in origin and essentially it means something like truth or reason or the word. Now as many of you may well know, that's why Christ himself claimed to be the logos manifest. Now it was the orienting of European civilization around that truth that allowed it to grow. We had a shared moral value system, we had individual laws we had to follow to keep a hydra society moving. It's what led to the growth of Europe and Hilaire Belloc to say, Europe is the faith and the faith is Europe. So to the nice chap who sent me an email this morning talking about people who sympathise with cultural Christianity but aren't fundamentally Christian believers, I would say you don't have to literally believe necessarily in a man on a cloud or anything like that. If you can have faith in what Europe is, that's essentially the same thing that Christian and non-Christian from the Western world can unite on to build a better tomorrow. Yet we can only really build that better world when our present belief system starts to fall apart. We're currently trapped in what's called scientism, the belief that science can answer all of the questions that human beings have, which it patently can't. A good example of this comes from Boris Johnson's sister. She's trying to sound very smart here on LBC about how a two-year-old already can see how Christianity is a load of nonsense. My son was two. Uh, We took him to church and um, the priest said, uh, you can ask me anything. And he said that my two-year-old son said, asked the priest, do you know Jesus to be true or do you believe Jesus to be true? To be, and then, and do you see what I mean? And he couldn't answer that question himself. Anyway, yes. or God. Anyway, listen. Wow. Wow. I mean, she really destroyed the whole tradition that gave birth to Western culture there, didn't she? But of course, it's not people like Rachel Johnson's fault they say this sort of nonsense. They've just been taught that religion's just wacky beliefs and they're the rational, sensible people. But of course, Western man or woman don't seem to understand that every time we take these cheap shots, we're chipping away at our own tradition, which informs who we are as a united people. None of this means you have to believe in talking snakes or magic tricks if you don't want to. It means that when you look in every single English village, you see a church. That, if you like, was the moral barometer that kept us united, that gave us the shared value system to make us one. And on top of that, gave us freedom from state overreach by providing a counter to power in society. Now I'm sure I've lost one or two of you already here and I'm not trying to make an apologetics for the church. I'm fully aware that that is completely lost in rationalist humanism too. That's why recently the Church of England has been saying it might even drop the word church from its name. And as the church chases the world, the world seems to get more and more insane. After all, is the post-religious world more sane than the religious world? It seems to me that before this rationalist humanism completely took over, things were a little more sane. I mean, we knew what a man and a woman is, for instance. And because we've lost that central order, intellectuals are increasingly wacky. Yet the desire for spiritual meaning hasn't completely disappeared. This is why things like modern art have risen up, the obsession with sex, drugs, music, non-dual philosophy and all these sorts of things. They're essentially just pseudo-versions of a tradition to unite people and society. And again, when you come to the non-dual spirituality types, it is a very deep and beautiful spiritual expression that, however, it never has any practical advice to unite anybody. And it leads to weird people like this, worshipping this Indian kid as the reincarnation of a teacher or something. Something like that. You only really get this weird behaviour in Westerners who've lost their tradition. They've somehow surmised that they're evil, their own tradition is evil, and they have to worship everything that isn't them. It's also why we have things like this, a black man doing some street dancing to a classical performance. Again, this sort of madness stems from people believing our tradition doesn't have any meaning. The only meaning you can source is woke ideology, which seeks to destroy our tradition for some supposed moral virtue. So we are going through some sort of cultural breakdown in slow motion. However, as I always say, in this chaos will be opportunity. It doesn't mean you have to turn back to magic beliefs. It means that we have to reawaken our tradition. Just like Belloc, we need to see that Europe is the faith and the faith is Europe. It's only via that that we can recreate the social harmony and order that we need for a civilization to flourish. These are just some of my thoughts, however. Do let me know what you think down below, and do consider subscribing to the channel.